Ryan was called by Martin Scorsese as one of the greatest of American actors, and I don't think there's really any disagreement from, about that, certainly not from me. Uh, his, his life and his roles were so at odds with one another, but Ryan uh, played all of these characters in, in not only film noir, but westerns and so forth, and underneath that exterior that one critic described as infernally taut uh, was someone that would have liked to have been Cary Grant in Monaco, and also a man of a deep social consciousness, social awareness, and politically active. So after the film is over, I'll talk with Jim and let him share some of his uh, insights into Bob Ryan, who was uh, not only a great actor, but a very, very diverse and fascinating human being. <laughs> Thank you. Um, interesting, that movie there, uh, the very end, where uh, Ryan comes back and they, they kiss and the, the hand clasp, that was, uh, my understanding is that was very controversial. And it was basically Nick Ray and RKO versus Jack Hausman and, and Robert Ryan, who did, Hausman and Ryan did not want to put that of uh, kind of happy ending at the end of it. They wanted Ryan to drive off thinking about what Ida Lupino had said to him and then kind of go into the fade out and leave it very noirish <laughs> and ambiguous. And the studio and Ray wanted to put where he comes back and he's reunited with Ida. So there was, there was some scrapping over that, uh, apparently. Well, the film was shelved for about um a year and a half between when the original shoot happened and when when they actually released it and um this howard was, hughes this was during the period when howard hughes was running rko and and every movie that got made there would be this post-production hell where he would monkey around with it and um, and not release it and not release it and um and this picture went through that sort of uh, um, genesis too so yeah yeah so uh i remember uh probably well over 10 years ago at a party at Eddie Muller's house, I ran into Robert Ryan's son, um, who, it was disarming because he looks exactly with his fa like his father with a beard, mm -hmm. and we chatted briefly, and he's, he pointed to this picture as his, if, one of his dad's best, if not his best. He said it was hard to top as far as he was concerned. Did, in your writing and everything, did, did Robert Ryan say anything or did he have any and leave anything about this movie and how he felt about it particularly? Well, you know, I had a feeling you were going to ask me that. And, and in fact, I couldn't find a single quote of him. About this <laughs> Sorry about that. And um, I, think, uh, um, I think because the picture had such, such a troubled history, I think that's true of a lot of actors and creative people. If, mm -hmm. if something uh, flops or if, if there's this long... Uh, struggle over it. They, they sort right. of have selective amnesia. And uh, yeah. I couldn't find a single quote of him talking about it. When I asked his children about it, they never remembered him saying anything about this movie. Um, and it wasn't one that he listed among his, his favorites. Yeah. And uh, I think to him it was just this this crime picture that didn't work out. You know, right. That was his only, right. which is strange because now it's considered uh, you know one of the key performances. One of his key pictures, and, yeah. And, and certainly yeah. one of the key uh, films in his, in his screen yeah. persona. But uh, he didn't seem to, I think he really liked Nicholas Ray. He liked working with Ray. Sure. He really liked Ida Lupino. So I think mm -hmm. making it was generally a, a positive experience. Mm -hmm. uh, but in terms of the result, I never could find any uh, uh, record of his response to it. And that was also because I think when it came out, they basically dumped it. They didn't really do any promotion for it. They yeah. just kind of released it. And so there wasn't, there wasn't a big, he was already working on something else by that point. And mm -hmm. so there weren't a lot of interviews surrounding mm -hmm. it or anything like that. So. Yeah, I, I touched on a little bit in my opening remarks. There was kind of this ambivalence of Ryan and his movie career and what he, what he wanted to do, what he was able to do, what he did do. Uh, can you elaborate on that a little bit? Well, he, he uh, wanted to do Shakespeare, and, uh, <laughs> and he did, in fact. He played Coriolanus uh, in, in an off-Broadway production that John Houseman directed. And, mm -hmm. um, and he wanted to do uh, serious, serious work. I mean, he was a, an English student at Dartmouth College and, uh, and, and actually wanted to be a playwright himself. And so he was very, very involved in the theater. And, and uh, he wanted to do serious, substantial work. And uh, I think at times was frustrated by the kind of pictures uh, he was making, which tended to be 
you know, many of them formula westerns and war pictures and, and crime pictures like this. Mm -hmm. yeah, I remember uh, reading something where he said, I have a face that lends itself to being on location in Arizona eating bad food <laughs> <laughs> and not, not, in, not in Monte Carlo, uh, you know, where Cary Grant would be. And, and th there, was, there was a certain amount of unfulfillment with that. It's understandable, but a little bit about Ryan the man. One of the things I'm struck with, if you know a little bit about Robert Ryan, and, I, and I'll let Jim take off with this, is that he was a very, very ardent liberal uh, uh, when that necessarily wasn't fashionable. And, and it was really a core belief. It wasn't, you know, uh, something, uh, he, he kind of wore it on his sleeve, but he believed it deeply. And then seeing him and Ward Bond together in this movie, and, and Ward Bond, a, a fine, fine actor, Ward Bond, during this time in Hollywood, during the, the blacklist period and, and all of that, Ward Bond, was one of the leading spirits of something called the Motion Picture Alliance, which started out to be something and it ended up kind of becoming something else. And it actually got to a point, probably right around uh, when this picture was made or shortly thereafter, that people actually to get work had to go and see Ward Bond to be cleared to go work. And, and, and a couple of uh, people that I know that actually had to do that. Uh, you know, uh, one, one was Anthony Quinn where he went in and Bond received him sitting on a commode. You know, you're not, you're not red, are you, Tony? I mean, it, it's really incredible when you read this stuff and it did actually happen. I, I kind of wonder how Bond and, and, and Ryan got along. But talk a little bit about Ryan's sensibilities and how that developed through the years. Well, his, his father was a, a very politically well-connected in Chicago. He grew up in Chicago, which is where I'm from. And uh, uh, his father was a, you know, uh, connected to the uh, uh, democratic machine there and very active politically and uh, so Ryan grew up in, in that sort of environment and uh, he married a, a woman Jessica Jessica Codwallader who was uh, a Quaker who was raised a Quaker um, and was a pacifist grew up in Berkeley and was a was a, uh, a confirmed pacifist and so Ryan's politics were very uh, I mean he was a peacenik before the word was even coined I mean after the war he was in the United World Federalists which was this uh, organization that uh, believed in world government um, in fact right after the uh, Second World War I read this somewhere there there was a, a poll done of the American people and 50 52 percent of the American people favored the complete liquidation of the United States Armed Forces in favor of an international peacekeeping force it's hard to imagine that now you'd never Never have that now, but uh, so he was he was active in the Federalists, and uh, later he uh, uh, he was chairman of the Southern California chapter of the United World Federalists, and uh, he was also the founder of the uh, uh, Hollywood chapter of SANE, which was an anti-nuclear uh, organization. Was founded in the uh, late 50s, uh, and was active in the civil rights movement as well. So his uh, his politics were, were definitely uh, uh, more liberal than uh, some of the characters he played on screen, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. uh, it, interesting, in, in working, I remember one story that uh, uh, my chum Mickey Knox told me about was um, uh, he was doing some dialogue stuff for Zanuck in The Longest Day, and they had uh, Ryan and Duke Wayne and all those actors over in Paris, and then He's in a meeting with Wayne and Ryan and Zanuck, and Zanuck says, well, you go work with these guys and, and work on their dialogue. You know, they walked out, and he says, like, I'm going to teach John Wayne and Robert Ryan how to say dialogue. So they all ended up going to a bar, and then uh, <laughs> Wayne got into this, kind of provoked Ryan into a political discussion, and uh, uh, apparently Ryan took it for a while, and then finally he said, you know, Duke, we, we can take this outside, but, you know, you really don't want to do that. And then Wayne kind of, it all kind of calmed down and so forth. But a um, uh, very interesting guy, and, and also the school that he founded that's still uh, extant in North Hollywood. Right, he and, yeah. his, he and his wife uh, founded the Oakwood School, which is in North Hollywood, uh, which is a progressive uh, started as a grade school now it's a k through 12 school and um they pretty much just started this thing from scratch with some other parents uh in the neighborhood because at the time there was a there was a huge school shortage around 1950 um because of all the children that had been born after the war you know uh, the baby boom once those kids all became five six years old there weren't enough schools to uh to accommodate them and so uh they wound up starting this school um 
and uh, you know put lots and lots of money into it. I mean, they they donated thousands and thousands of dollars to uh, keeping this thing afloat, and. Uh, they became very interested in the scholarship of education and John Dewey and, and, and progressive education. Uh, so they, they really put their, put their, uh, their money and their, and their, and their time uh, where, it, where their mouths were and, uh, and, and start launch the school, which is still around.